In this video, we're gonna find out if this mare is too much horse for her owner or if she can kind of come back to the rider and get refocused and not take over. So a little bit of background on this horse. Uh, she's about 12 years old and she was used on a ranch for a while. And lately she hasn't been ridden in about six months. So I rode her the day before and I'm riding her today. And I'm trying to understand how committed this horse is to being speedy. So most, um, be, you know, kind of not real confident riders, whether they were experienced or not, if they're not real confident, it usually is a little bit scary when the horse wants to go faster than you want them to go. This is why horses that are more lazy tend to be better kids horses or beginners horse because you'd rather the rider have to encourage the horse to keep moving versus trying to hold them back. So I need to know how committed is this horse to going fast and is it just that she's out of practice um, and I just need to know kind of where this horse is at in terms of how forward she really wants to be. I'm here in uh, Texas at Windy Hill Equine Rescue and we did a fundraiser for them a while back if you guys remember. And we're working with um, a bunch of horses that came in and I'm gonna be working with them for the week. And then on the weekend, the owners are gonna come back and uh, do a clinic. Now this mare, I'm just getting to know her here. And she was brought to us with the question, is she too much horse for the owner? Or um, does the owner need to kind of cowgirl up and ride through it a little bit more, so to speak? And what I observed from this horse yesterday is she got a little bit worried but mostly she was kind of strong willed and just kind of wanted to take over. Meaning instead of riding straight, she would go right or I'm going left and kind of, she would want to dictate where she was going. Now right now she can't stand still. Okay, so let's jump right into the training lesson here. And so what I'm gonna do is every time she gets a motor going, I'm gonna take away the hindquarters. So I'm gonna lift up my rein here and move her hip around and offer her a chance to relax and stand still. So I want you guys to leave a comment below and let me know some point in this video if you think this horse would be a good kids horse or beginner's horse or if you think she's too much and i'll let you know what i think at the end very good so she kind of took me up on it here you can see her wanting to look around and there's a there's a technique that i've showed a lot there's two techniques relax rain and which is kind of what i just used to get her to stand still here and then riding guide Real quick, gonna interrupt this video to let you guys know if you would like to see more detailed training videos, including the ability to ask me questions about your horse or send me videos for coaching, you can do that on my Patreon page. Right now it's only $10 a month, but it's gonna be going up to $20 a month in January. So get on there now while you can, and that way you're locked in at the $10 price. Can't wait to see you guys there. And mostly I've showed you on horses that I've already worked on it with and they kind of already had a pretty good idea. Well, this, this, these techniques are brand new to this mare, okay? So basically, I'm gonna implement two strategies to help this mare settle and get more focused and feel easily guidable. See, it's very intimidating to ride a horse that feels like they're not listening to you. It feels like they're just going all over the place. Now, I'm not concerned about riding this horse at all because I, I am a confident rider and I can control her when I need to. Um, but to, a, to an, a less confident rider, it can feel scary when the horse isn't listening. So we're gonna use two strategies. The first is when she's nervous, I'm gonna bend her with one rein and I'm gonna ask her to walk a circle. And I'm gonna use my inside rein and inside leg and ask her to kind of just relax and recover on this circle. So when I feel her kind of spooling up and getting, getting a little wound up, I'm just gonna ask her, to, now you can see her change there a little bit, she kind of recovered and now I'm gonna let her out of it, okay? I'm gonna give her kind of a direction. Now you can see her immediately wanna take over and kind of decide where she's gonna go. And already I feel her more relaxed. So now I'm gonna go on to my second technique, which is when she, like right there, she just took a hard right and I never asked her to go that way. I'm gonna pick up both reins and I'm gonna turn her 180 degrees. So just something I wanna point out here is you can see in the video how the horse, it was really wiggly back and forth. And some horses will do it, they'll travel in a straight line and they'll move their head side to side quickly, or some horses will turn a lot. And this is actually a horse that is being fearful. They're not trying to argue about where to go, they're actually unconfident. And when the horses get worried, their prey animal mentality is to kind of be on the alert for danger, and this is where they get really wiggly. So my job is to help this horse get more comfortable and more settled, which will help her travel out straight. Now, I don't really care where I end up going, okay? Now, she kind of took over and was gonna head out the gate, which is, we have that gate set so we can let cows in to get feed in the morning. Now, I'm gonna turn her loose again. So, if I'm gonna help her get more responsible for where she's traveling, I have to do less first. That is the number one requirement if you wanna give a horse responsibility. 
do less first, which is not human nature. Human nature says, do more, uh, control the horse, make them listen to what you want, that sort of thing. So with a horse that's more woe than go, the like classic thing that every human wants to do is like your natural instincts is to use the reins and hold the horse back. And this is probably one of the most common mistakes I see everywhere I go. You know, I travel around teaching clinics and I work with, you know, thousands of people throughout the year. And this is by far the most common uh, mistake that we can make. We have to really learn how to turn the reins loose because that's going to help the horse feel better. And then we have to redirect that energy. The more you try to control them, you can make them stay at a walk or a slow walk or fast trot, but you're going to create other behaviors. They're going to start opening their mouth up. They're going to start getting anxious there. That energy is going to go somewhere and it's going to turn into a displaced behavior. So even though you're controlling the horse, you're not teaching them to be more comfortable. So we have to get to the root cause of the problem, which is the horse is a bit worried. They're feeling like they need to move their feet faster. And we need to help that horse get more comfortable and settled. We're going to do that by going to a loose rein and learning strategies to help a horse recover and redirect them, not by controlling them. Reins are for communication, not control. Pick her up. I'm kind of using the one hand technique here because that kind of picks up a feel on both reins and helps her to kind of neck rein. So it puts a little bit of woe feel into this. Okay. Good. So this is already feeling a little bit better. You see her head coming down. Hopefully you guys heard her kind of going, making that noise, which indicates they're relaxing tension through the rib cage. They're breathing all the way. Now I feel her taking over this direction. So again, I'm gonna pick her up, turn 180 degrees. And then I'm gonna try to line her out and get a little bit of a straight line at the end of that, okay? So it, it, this is a very simple technique, but what's hard to do is to, it's hard for the rider to turn loose, put your hand down, let the horse commit to which way they're going and then fix it and then put your hand back down. <laughs> okay. You know, human nature again says to do more. And so it's hard for us just to get committed to that. So I'm just feeling for those moments when she takes over. Now I do this with just about every horse I ride, um, as part of my warm up. So there she's looking out, but you just let those little things go. Now, if she were to go ahead and like, say she were to trot off or get, get kind of more nervous, like there, her head kind of came up. I might choose that as a moment to bend her here and ask her to get soft again on one rein. You know, this is what we call a suppling exercise, which means when a horse feels kind of stiff, it typically means that they're nervous, they're a little bit anxious, and um, the more we can help them relax, that's why I call it relax rein, and bend their ribs, bend uh, through their head and neck, and maybe do a slight partial disengagement in the hindquarters, if we can get them to stay here, we can help them to recover. We can help them to settle and get more relaxed. And this is just a really simple, it's a, it's a great starting point for a foundation on a horse. I wanna be able to recover if they get nervous. And I also wanna teach them to quit taking over. I wanna be able to put my hand down and travel in a straight line. Whenever she takes over, pick her up, go the other way. So let's go ahead and move into a trot here with this. Now, the other thing is I could go ahead and turn it whenever I don't want to. I don't really want to ride through that mud right there. Now there, she's pretty speedy. See if, if you guys can kind of see that, that's, that's a step away from cantering. And so we're going to recover, not because I was scared and thought I was about to die or anything, but just because she was getting too uncomfortable to learn. A horse has to be comfortable enough to learn. So whatever pattern you offer your horse, it has to be achievable. And, and that could mean, you know, maybe staying at a walk or a trot. It could mean maybe going into a smaller space. It could mean warming them up a little bit more on the ground. It could mean all sorts of things. But the, the end uh, point there is a horse has to be comfortable enough to learn. So I, I made the comment here, you wanna ask the horse an achievable question. I wanna explain a little bit what I mean by that. There's kind of a couple scenarios that can come up. One is you're giving the horse too big of a puzzle. Like, let's say that this horse, within five to 10 minutes doing these exercises in the arena, it wasn't getting any better. Um, maybe I should go to a round pen where it's smaller. That might be a more achievable pattern because the space is easier. So it's not like you always, it's always about the feel and the timing and with the technique. Sometimes it's like, are you asking the horse the wrong question? And so this is something that comes more with experience um, as you get better. But what I would encourage you, if you're not getting results within five to 10 minutes, ask yourself, am I doing the technique right? Is my feeling timing good? And if, if you feel like those things check off, then you gotta ask yourself, is this too big of a puzzle for the horse? Is it too hard of a question? 
Another example might be, have you ever seen a horse ride up to like a ditch or a creek or something and they refuse to take a step forward? And you'll see the rider, continue, or trailer loading is the same thing. They'll see the person continue to ask them to go, but the horse can't go until they finally like leap over it. That's a no question. Okay, they're asking the horse to go at that moment. What you'd be better off doing is retreating, backing up a bit, and so that when you first ask them to move forward, you know for a fact they can take at least a step or two forward before they hit that threshold. And that would be asking the horse a yes question. So there's an achievable level of difficulty, and then they're setting up the pattern where you get at least some part of the correct answer when you first ask the question. See there, you can see her kind of spooling up again, so we'll just go ahead and bend her down, recover. She's not in trouble, she's just getting a little worried, and I'm kind of helping her stay on this side of trouble, okay? I'm helping her recover, it's the best, it's the best word for it. Just, hey, relax, we don't need to get that wound up here. You can see her here blowing out and decompressing. We're just kind of showing her, showing her the way. But if you've ever worked with a horse and you asked them for something that was too difficult, what you'll find out is that you could have been out there for a couple of hours working through something and even, even got to a spot where you thought they were better and the next day you're feeling like you're starting all over again. There's a likely chance that horse was too uncomfortable to learn whatever you were showing them that day. There could be a lot of other reasons too, but um, I just, I'm kind of on a mission to show people that um, we need to do less first and we need to ask our horse to do achievable things. You know, it's okay to challenge them and stretch their emotional fitness. So like this trot, much better than the previous ones. So I wanna spend more and more time practicing how I want the horse to go and less and less time riding them how I don't want them to go. Now, she's getting a little bit speedy, so what I'll do is I'll just throw in some turns. And again, this is the riding guide part of it. So now I'm turning, not because she's taking over, but because she's speeding up a little bit faster than what my seat is saying to go. So I can kind of pick my battles here. I'm meaning sometimes I can choose to bend her and do relaxed rain if I feel like she's getting worried and there's some emotions involved in it. Or if I feel like she just doesn't know how to travel in a balanced way right now, um, I can just do some frequent turns and help her to kind of pay a little bit more attention and just uh, be ready because this rider makes frequent turns. So hopefully you guys left a comment. I'll be curious to read what your comments are about this. What I think is this horse is really in the middle. Like she hasn't been ridden, you know, for six months and she, she made some changes very quickly. So I'm feeling pretty optimistic, optimistic that a lot of people could get along with this horse. And I would err to the side of a beginner could get along with her with some more riding, regular riding time. Having said that, it actually depends more on the individual rider than this particular horse. There are some horses that anybody could ride because the horse is really more woe than go. With this particular horse, it's really about the owner riding her and letting me know how, how she feels. What this owner decided to do was to continue her training. And so um, I think that in the long run, this horse is going to work out very well for the owner. And uh, so she's putting the horse in training with one of my friends. And uh, I think they're going to get along just fine in the future. And so I already kind of like how this is looking now. And uh, she needs about 20 more minutes of this. Uh, but I'm not going to bore you all with that. So thank you guys for tuning in and watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And uh, we're going to keep working here and uh, see where we can, we can end up. So we'll see you on the next one.